Railgun damage has finally been revealed on a real Japanese target ship. We finally have a look at what this controversial futuristic weapon can do and what it shows is a turning point in modern naval warfare. For the first time, Japan has publicly shown what its prototype electromagnetic railgun can actually do at sea. Not in a lab, not as a simulation, but in real ocean conditions, hitting a moving vessel with non-explosive, hyper-velocity projectiles. And here's the twist. While the US Navy walked away from real guns years ago, Japan is now proving the technology is far from dead. In fact, they might be closer to making it operational than anyone expected. Japan's Acquisition Technology and Logistics Agency, ATLA, has finally shared details from its major at-sea railgun test earlier this year. Until now, Japan's been pretty quiet about how much progress it's made. But during its annual Defense Technology Symposium, ATLA lifted the curtain showing for the first time the impact marks on the target ship that was struck multiple times by prototype railgun projectiles. And yes, the results were exactly what engineers hoped to see. The projectiles hit with enough consistency that ATLA openly stated the data gathered from these shots will feed directly into Japan's push for a fully operational naval railgun. This is especially notable because the U.S. Navy, after nearly a decade of development, halted its own railgun program in the early 2020s due to massive hurdles in power, barrel life, and integration. But Japan isn't backing down. If anything, they're accelerating. This most recent test took place on board JS Asuka, a 6,200-ton experimental ship operated by the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Asuka is essentially Japan's floating weapons laboratory, a one-of-a-kind test platform designed specifically for evaluating advanced naval systems. Earlier this year, photos leaked showing a large railgun strapped to the rear flight deck of the ship. And in September, ATLA gave a small tease by releasing initial images of the weapon firing at sea. But those were just the warm-ups. Now we finally know what happened during those shots. The railgun they used in these trials is the latest evolution of a design ATLA has been refining since around the mid-2010s. Early versions were fired on land, and Japan even ran previous at-sea tests, though those never involved shooting an actual target vessel. This time, however, a real ship, a tug-like vessel, was put in the crosshairs. The target ship was towed behind another vessel, moving during at least part of the test, which gave ATLA the ability to gather data about stability, guidance, and projectile behavior against a moving surface. That alone is a big step forward. Hitting a moving maritime target with a hypervelocity projectile is not as simple as pointing and shooting. Timing, stabilization, and electromagnetic acceleration all factor in. And the results? The target was hit multiple times. The impact marks resembled cross-shaped points caused by the fin-stabilized, dart-shaped projectiles maintaining stable flight. For a railgun test, that flight stability is absolutely essential, and the fact that Japan achieved these consistent hits is a major technical confirmation. During the testing, ATLA also fired the gun at a 45-degree upward angle to gather ballistic data. This wasn't about hitting anything. This was pure science, measuring arc, drag, velocity loss, and long-range potential. Japan mounted several sensors on Asuka's flight deck, including a camera right under the barrel for remote aiming, a high-speed camera to capture projectile exit, and a small radar to track velocity. They even had a drone filming from above. All of this tells you Tokyo is building a huge analytical data set exactly the kind of data you need if you want to turn a prototype into a combat-ready weapon. But as impressive as the firing data is, the bigger story is the engineering behind getting a railgun onto a ship in the first place. Unlike conventional guns, railguns are hungry, brutally hungry for power. They also generate monstrous heat and enormous stress on barrels every time a projectile is launched at several thousand meters per second. Japan's prototype railgun required four full shipping containers of support equipment strapped onto the flight deck of JS Asuka. 
Inside those containers were electrical systems, cooling, power conditioning equipment, everything required to keep the gun alive. This is where the US Navy hit a brick wall. Not because railguns don't work, they do, but because integrating them onto a real warship requires massive space, power generation, and cooling capacity. Fitting that onto destroyers or cruisers is not trivial. But Japan seems determined to push ahead anyway, and to their credit, they're solving the core problems one by one. For example, ATLA revealed that Japan's latest tests show a barrel life of more than 200 rounds at around 2300 meters per second. That is a big deal. Barrel wear has always been one of the most brutal engineering problems for railguns. As the rails degrade, accuracy and range plummet and catastrophic failure risk rises. Just last year, Japan's reported velocity was about 2230 meters per second. Not only did they increase performance, they nearly doubled the barrel life goal they set earlier, which was around 120 rounds. This suggests Japan has made real progress in materials, cooling, and electromagnetic wear reduction. And while Asuka's setup is a big temporary test configuration, ATLA acknowledges that a real naval installation would require deep integration inside a warship's hull. Heavy power systems below deck, advanced cooling loops, structural reinforcement, ammo storage, and more. That's years of ship design work. It's expensive. It's complex. But based on Japan's tone, they're committed. During a panel discussion at the DSC Japan 2025 Expo, Kazumi Ito, a senior official at ATLA, said Japan's railgun efforts are progressing, but admitted there are various challenges. And yes, that's exactly what you'd expect. Railguns aren't a plug-and-play upgrade, they're a rethinking of naval weapon architecture. But let's talk about why Japan is doing all this in the first place, because this part matters. A practical railgun offers a warship a flexible, long-range, high-velocity weapon that can hit targets in the air, at sea, or on land. It has the potential to defend against hypersonic missiles, which is one of Japan's biggest concerns given the evolving missile arsenals in the region. And because the rounds are small, solid metal projectiles, essentially inert slugs, you can carry a massive magazine for a fraction of the cost of traditional missiles. If you're in a situation where you're at sea for long durations and you can't reload expensive missiles, the ability to fire dozens or even hundreds of high-velocity projectiles is a game changer. That's why Japan sees railguns not just as a cool future weapon, but as a practical solution to a very real operational need. And it doesn't stop at the Navy. ATLA's roadmap now includes both naval and land-based railgun systems, including truck-mounted versions. Japan sees railguns as part of a broader defensive ecosystem, especially against high-speed, high-altitude threats. What makes Japan's progress even more interesting is the contrast with the U.S. Navy. The U.S. was the global leader starting in 2005, pouring years of testing into railgun prototypes. They planned to move testing to sea, but never made it. The challenges, power demand, barrel life, cooling, and integration piled up, and by 2022, the program was publicly shelved. Japan, meanwhile, kept going. And they're not alone. France and Germany are jointly developing railgun tech, Turkey has been very vocal about its progress, and China, at least for a time, displayed a railgun prototype mounted on a large turret aboard a PLN vessel back in 2018. The status of that program is unclear, but the interest remains global. And here's the part people might not expect. ATLA has reportedly met with the U.S. Navy to discuss America's past railgun work and how Japan might leverage that knowledge. There's also talk of future collaboration. On top of that, Japan has already signed a cooperation agreement with the Franco-German Research Institute, ISL, specifically for developing railgun technologies. Put it all together, and you see the real story. Railguns aren't dead, not even close. They're evolving, and Japan is positioning itself at the front of the pack. The newly released data makes one thing clear. Railgun damage to a real ship wasn't just a successful experiment, it was a milestone. Japan is gathering the real-world, at-sea performance data that the U.S. Navy never got. 
And while it will still take years to develop an operational railgun that can survive the brutal demands of naval warfare, Japan has officially crossed the line from laboratory curiosity to credible working prototype. And that's what makes this moment historic. So what we're seeing isn't just a new weapon being tested, it's a glimpse of the future. Japan is proving that high-velocity electromagnetic weapons might become a core part of modern naval defense, especially in a world where hypersonic threats are becoming the norm. Whether railguns eventually become standard equipment on warships or remain a specialized tool will come down to power, cooling, and integration. But every round fired from JS Asuka brings Japan one step closer to a capability the world once thought was slipping away. If the U.S. Navy wants to revisit railguns someday, Japan might end up being the country that shows them how to make it work.